In 200 million AD the northwestern part of the new supercontinent Nova Pangaea has a truly bizarre and massive rainforest stretching for thousands of kilometers. The region in the northwest of Nova Pangaea is pounded by saturated onshore winds the global circulation of the atmosphere brings constant westerly winds to this part of the landmass winds which travel over a vast surface of warm ocean filling up with moisture as they go thick black clouds roll in from the sea and condense into water as soon as they reach land sunlight is rarely seen here rain falls relentlessly from the overhead darkness drenching everything below. With no mountain range to act as a windbreak the rain-sodden region stretches hundreds of miles inland great rivers carry the runoff back to the sea through swamps and lakes surrounded by deep murky forests with all this water a carbon dioxide rich atmosphere and warm global temperatures forests thrive and grow to immense proportions the tallest trees here are conifers which grow to the same great heights as the giant redwood trees and other pinnails that have dominated this area since the Triassic period. Only a handful of specialized species are able to survive the wet conditions of the northern forest flowering plants are rare in this lush forest they have been mostly replaced by another highly versatile organism, lichen. In the rich habitat of the northern forest there is no shortage of animal life. The low level of the forest is a tangle of lichen trees their trailing feathery structures absorb moisture and photosynthesize their spores bursting from sacs as animals brush biare easily distributed. The lichen tree is a type of large superficially tree-like lichen populating the northern forest of Pangaea II in 200 million AD they are a keystone species of the lichen forest biome. As it is not an individual organism the lichen tree did not strictly speaking evolve in the conventional sense of the term lichens were allowed to grow into larger more complex forms due to greater buildups of dead fungus in the trunk like core thanks to the dark and damp environmental conditions of the northern forest and the lack of competition due to the wet environment and the catastrophic 100 million AD mass extinction. EAK time equals 0.4 s, greater than lichens are composite organisms made out of algaes and different types of fungus, with the fungus providing a protective outer layer, and the algae providing nourishment from within. Lichen trees are sturdy and superficially tree-like in form, and may grow up to 3 meters in height. Instead of the soft fleshy bodies of human-era lichens, they have hard, robust trunks built up from dead fungal fiber accumulated in the tree's core. Lichen trees are hollow and fall of small holes, allowing sufficiently small organisms to live inside them. As they are not true plants, they have no leaves, they have only a wide trunk and a number of bare branches. In this way, they are somewhat evocative of human-era dead trees. To photosynthesize and gather moisture, lichen trees trail feathery algal structures like curtains in the humid air. They reproduce by growing large sacs filled with assemblages of both lichen and fungal spores. These sacs explode upon any contact, so their dispersal is easily aided by large animals brushing past the trees. Lichen trees also grow their own kind of fruit, a diamond-shaped lichen pod or lichen tree pod which is used as food by several species. The lichen tree is an important species in the northern forest. Animals such as squibbons and forest flish use it for roosting, and all the known terrasquid feed on its fruits. One species of flish, the hornbill flish, is specially adapted to feed on the fruit of lichen trees, cracking them open with its large, heavy beak. The lichen tree itself also benefits from animals coming near it, as they may burst its spore sacs, allowing it to reproduce. The lichen tree also has a close symbiotic relationship with the slithersucker, a giant predatory slime mold. The slithersucker makes its home in the hollow algal core of the lichen tree, creeping out to drape itself over a branch at certain times of the day to catch prey. If the slithersucker does catch something, parts of the animal will inevitably drop to the forest floor, providing nutrients for the lichen tree as well as the slithersucker. At certain times of day, it oozes along a branch and dangles strands of itself below, forming a sticky curtain. A passing F. Orist flish is easily trapped in the slithersucker's slimy net. Once the flish has been caught, the slithersucker slides off the branch and crashes to the forest floor. There, it secretes a digestive acid which slowly dissolves the helpless forest flesh. The slithersucker is a form of giant predatory slime mold native to the northern forest of Pangaea II in 200 million AD. Slime molds. Communities of microbes that come together to form a single, coordinated organism, do not grow very large in the human era, and feed mainly on microorganisms which are invisible to the naked eye. 
because of their nature, the slime molds survived the 100 million AD mass extinction, and, with many niches of life left uninhabited, quickly became larger and more organized. The slithersucker is composed of millions of microbes which are acting as a single organism. Because of this, it is capable of changing its shape with ease, can split into multiple parts, and can survive practically anything. It is also capable of dissolving the tissue of animals. However, its movement is very slow, and it cannot travel any significant distances by itself. Slithersuckers live in the hollow cores of lichen trees, coming out at certain times of the day to drape itself over the branches, waiting for prey such as insects or forest flesh to fly into its trap. Once it has caught an animal, it slides off the branch and crashes onto the forest floor, where it dissolves and eats its prey. Larger animals may take several days to be dissolved. The slithersucker has a symbiotic relationship with lichen trees. It lives inside the hollow, algal core of the lichen, emerging through the organism's porous skin at certain times of the day to catch unsuspecting flesh. Any parts of the flesh that are undigested will fall to the ground and be absorbed as nutrients by the lichen, therefore benefiting both organisms. As it is too slow to move significant distances by itself, the slithersucker utilizes megasquid to disperse its microbes throughout the forest, allowing it to multiply. It changes into the shape of a lichen tree pod, which are fed upon by megasquid, and is digested. Microbes then migrate across T. He megasquid's body, effectively taking control of it, and forcing it to sneeze out the slithersucker into another part of the forest. In the gloom of the tangled branches and trailing curtains of the lichen trees, bright little jewels flit about. They are as brightly colored as butterflies, but they dart like wrens and hum like humming birds. The forest flish is a species of small, insectivorous flish native to the northern forest of Pangaea II in 200 million AD. It is the smallest species of flish in the northern forest. More specialized cousins of ocean flish, the forest flish has evolved the capacity to abandon the sea altogether instead being highly adapted to a rainforest environment. Like the ocean flesh, its fins have evolved into wings. The posterior fins have become hook-like feet which enable the flesh to roost. The forest flesh evolved to take the place of forest birds like hummingbirds, which were all wiped out by the 100 million AD mass extinction. The gill of the forest flesh has evolved into several parts. Part of the exterior gill has become an ear, whilst the gill arches in the throat are now capable of producing sound. The rest of the gill has evolved into a membrane to amplify the chirping created by the arches. The green and blue scaled forest flesh is smaller, more compact, and more lightly built than its maritime cousin. Its pectoral wings are smaller, similar in structure to those of a butterfly, and are capable of flapping far faster, up to 30 beats a second. The forest flesh's pelvic fins have evolved into small hooks, enabling them to roost from the branches of trees. With wings capable of beating up to 30 times per second, the forest flesh is agile enough to hover in the air and catch the small flying insects populating the lichen forest. It tends to travel and roost in small groups. The forest flesh communicates by making chirping noises using the gill arches in its throat. Its call more closely resembles the shrill grating of a grasshopper than the fluid notes of a bird. Like bats, they roost upside down, hanging from branches. The forest flish occupies the niche of a common insectivorous forest bird, such as a hummingbird. The flish sometimes uses lichen trees foe. R. Roosting. The slithersucker relies on the flish for food, and in turn the lichen tree relies on it for fertilization. Squibbons are agile enough to occasionally catch and eat forest flish. While the ability to operate tools and act communally reflects an intelligence ideally suited to life in the northern forest, it may be that a changing environment will encourage the development of even greater sophistication. Perhaps a reasoning type of intelligence will evolve once again. The squibbon is a species of highly intelligent, arboreal terrasquid native to the northern forest of Pangaea II in 200 million AD. As the most human-like animals on Earth since the human era 200 million years previously, Squibbins may develop human-like culture and society in the far future, and presumably evolves to dominate the planet just as humans did. In the wake of the 100 million AD mass extinction, the terrasquids evolved to take advantage of the niches left empty by many animals. The squibbin fills the niches of brachiating animals and small, swift arboreal hunters. In the future, squibbins may evolve greater intelligence, 
and perhaps even a civilization. They are already capable of using tools and even weapons, and are highly intelligent, so it is possible that a change in the Squibbon's environment may lead to it developing even further. Squibbons more closely resemble their marine ancestors than the Megasquid, both in size and in body plan. Their torso is small and vaguely oval-shaped, and, as with regular squid, they have eight long, flexible legs and two pairs of smaller tentacles. These two tentacles are equipped with highly developed suckers or suction cups, which form highly flexible finger-like or pincer-like protuberances. Their eyes are set on muscular, flexible stalks. Squibbons are the most agile of the terrasquids, and, with no skeleton to hinder their movement, are far more effective swingers than human-era animals such as gibbons. Unlike gibbons, they do not brachiate, swinging one arm after the other, instead, they loop end over end in a continuous somersaulting action, keeping their stocked eyes level with the body's center of gravity as they do so, ensuring they are always looking towards the next branch. Their large brains and sharp vision enables them to navigate the forest canopy at high speeds. Highly social animals. Squibbons live in family communes and build simple, nest-like structures in the uppermost stories of the forest. They are the most intelligent animals of 200 million AD, with complex and close family bonds and social structures. Like humans before them, squibbons are capable of using tools. Young squibbons learn by playing, and the colony is quite capable of working together as a whole community. Squibbons are omnivorous and feed mainly on plants, fruits, and lichen pods but they may also eat small animals which they catch with their tentacles. Young squibbons sharpen their senses and coordination by chasing other animals. The suction cups on a squibbon's tentacles form finger-like protuberances which are so flexible that a squibbon can manipulate small objects and even use simple tools. They have even developed the use of weapons to some degree, as they will sometimes brandish branches as clubs, and use fruits and lichen pods as thrown projectiles. Omnivores Squibbons will eat both small animals such as forest flesh, and fruits like those of the lichen tree, in which they may also build nests. Chasing animals such as flesh can sharpen the senses and coordination of squibbons. Careless squibbons may end up caught by similarly omnivorous megasquid, but the colony will always defend their own by harassing the megasquid with fruits and spore polyps, or swinging down and rescuing the endangered squibbon. They may also fall prey to slithersuckers. Heavier than an elephant and almost as tall, the megasquid pushes its way through the soaking vegetation, splintering conifer trunks and pulping the branches of lichen trees as it goes. The megasquid is an elephant-sized species of terrasquid native to the northern forest of Pangaea II in 200 million AD. It is the largest land animal of its time. The cephalopods have been slowly adapting for life on dry land since 100 million AD, with the large Bengali swampus octopus. However, they only truly began to evolve and diversify after the 100 million AD mass extinction, which wiped out most large life forms on Earth. With many empty ecological n. Icheset was the squid not the octopuses which evolved to be the dominant animals the megasquid in particular appears to have evolved because of the lack of large land animals like the swampus the early terrasquids dragged themselves across the land but the megasquid's ancestor eventually developed legs. The megasquid is 4 meters tall and weighs 8 tons physically it appears to be very different to regular squid, however save for a few differences they are very similar to a squid but tilted vertically. The main body is the most like that of a squid with a large mantle and small eyes this mantle as porous as air can flow through it to reach the lungs and keep the animal alive the small brain is located just behind the eyes. However everything below the mantle is strange and foreign its eight limbs have evolved into one third of a meter thick column like legs reminiscent of elephant or sauropod legs these legs are composed entirely of circular vertical rings of muscle in addition it has two tentacles at the front of its body which are used as arms picking up and manipulating food unlike the highly evolved legs these tentacles are similar to the tentacles of a modern day squid. Set in the very center of this network of legs is the megasquid's beak-like mouth the anus would appear to be at the back of the animal just under the mantle and the location of the reproductive organs as you known. On the front center of the mantle above the megasquids faces a large blue vocal sac the megasquid uses these sacs to generate deep booming calls for communication the megasquid's entire digestive and respiratory systems seem blended together they breathe through their vocal sac which is connected to the anus suggesting that the stomach is in the same tract as the lungs the sacs also act as a nasal passage. 
The skin of a megasquid is not what one would expect from a squid, it is tough and rhinoceros like the skin of a megasquid is generally brown with lighter stripes on some individuals to keep itself from drying out. 0.2 s, greater than the skin of megasquid secretes some kind of liquid. The megasquid is a slow, omnivorous animal. It will eat anything that presents itself, from lichen tree capsules, squibbon, and disguised slither suckers. The tree capsules are commonly targeted because of their bright color. Megasquids have excellent color vision. Megasquid locomotion is difficult. They are very slow, and have a very specific way of walking. The front and back right legs are moved forward with the middle left legs, and then the same the other way around. If megasquid moved in any other way, they would overbalance or trip over themselves. Megasquid can live up to a maximum of 50 years, at least partially thanks to the lack of large land predators on Pangaea too. Megasquid communicate with each other via large blue vocal sacs on the forehead area of their mantles. They produce different sounds, from low grumbling or humming to a loud boom. The sounds are made when a megasquid breathes in a certain way. Megasquid use their anterior arm tentacles as hands, grabbing food with them, and generally using them as tools. For tasks such as moving obstacles, megasquid are used by slither suckers as a method of dispersal. The slither sucker tricks the megasquid into eating it, and then takes control of the giant squid's central nervous system by inflaming its brain, and causes it to sneeze, sending bits of the slither sucker around the forest. This is not harmful to the megasquid. Megasquid also eat squibbons. However, occasionally the tables are turned somewhat, and squibbons will taunt passing megasquid from the trees throwing things at them and swinging around. 